Greetings and salutations from Evan, Evelyn O'Malley, Lady of the Realm. And what I want to talk to you dudes and dudettes is movie cliches. Why? Because no matter what we watch, what we've ever watched, no matter what show we have watched, oh, got some wake there. Ugh. Sorry. Anyways, no matter what we're watching, no matter what we see, no matter what we know, well, no matter how far mankind has come, there will always be cliches. And, of course, there will always be some stereotypes, but we in the matters that we go along. But, however, my favorite cliches, if there are any, have to be... My first one would be, hey, the perspective of show. Oh. One, okay, an example of this show would be, have you ever watched some characters come home after having a, after having a fight while, you know, we'll say if they're at a diner. And they're all bedraggled and everything, you know, it's the bickery and everything. And people ask them, what were they fighting about? You know, where's the story? Why does, we'll say, why does Garfield look like he just got hit on a sledgehammer and ran over by a wily e. coyote? Hey, of an acne truck. And why does John look like, hey, well, he could practically pound on poor little, Ar little Garfield uh, if he said another ed <laughs> word edgewise. <sighs> well, they usually... Okay. It would probably start off with maybe Garfield explain. well, John, that was so mean to me. I cannot believe he wouldn't let me have the last bit of the lasagna. He knows I like that. And I was being such a sweet, kind, considerate person. I even let him have, have, have at least half of my drink. Of course, John chimes in with his part of the story. After, you know, chimes in with his part of the story. After Garfield has explained it. And states, V, <laughs> you nice never. Oh my god. You had at least 300 pieces of lasagna. But I still had the bill huh, that states 300, bu 300 bucks due next Thursday. No exceptions. <laughs> and as you know, as John kind of takes a sympathetic approach, too. He tries to feel like, and you know, Garfield, you know I would have made, gladly made your lasagna. You know I'm a great cook. So, why? Hey, won't you, why did you have to hit me over the head at so many times? Huh? And, you know, for me, one of the best bits of comedy is when I saw it as a kid, I would see, you know, one character, the mean character in the story with sharp, jagged teeth, and of course he always sounds completely and utterly unreasonable, and I don't care, I don't want to go to bed, I'll go to bed whenever I want to, like that. And, yeah, of course, like I said, you get the angelic one, as I like to call him, who's like, Oh, but, but remember, you got to stay up at at least 500 nights already. And it's to develop sympathy for both. But here it's comedic because you know both of them are being stupid. They're, 
they both are lying because you gotta have someone look good in a fight. Okay? And part of the reasons why I like it is it's amazing how two people can misconstrue a story. Okay? And, I, and some of the stories I see have bitter endings where it's like, oh, okay, both of them were right. There was a unicorn at that party, and you know, they didn't plow through the yard like they like the like one of them said. Eh? It didn't quite get seen. Okay. Okay. So it provides kind of like a maybe someone lied. Maybe they were telling the truth. It's just what you take from the story. Okay. Second TV show or movie cliche is the underdog story. And the reason why I love the underdog thing is I like seeing how characters progress and grow up. And change their perspectives. Things. Okay. Okay. My most favorite, and some of you may not have heard of this particular movie, would be Karate Kid. That was just our generation's Rocky. It was just cool to see this kid who was gearing up to uh, go fight someone. And it, it was it was nice. It was nice to see pair development in that particular way. Okay. Um, oh, another cliche, and this is more of a character cliche opposed to an actual one. And it's the silent character. The reason why I tend to like the whole silent character thing is. They rely on acting. They don't say anything, they don't do anything, but they still provide a necessary thing. I would probably say, I say, this is my favorite character cliche overall. Oh, because, or I guess which one would be my favorite? As I just said, I think I at least have three. Um, the Cricket from Mulan, still one of my favorite films, despite the possible racism in it. And, wait a minute, sorry, there's another, sorry. <gasps> Ooh. Dopey from Snow White. He doesn't need to talk. I think the uh, Marx Brothers do that for him. <laughs> Anyways, okay. the next quiet character cliche. Hmm. I really have to think long and hard about this one. Sorry. I'm trying to think about which one. Who else would be in like, this list? Perfect for it. Um, that's you know, what I can think of. Sorry. Yeah, on that end. And maybe one other cliche altogether. Is the Wizard of Oz cliche. And why I call it the Wizard of Oz cliche is whenever you're watching a TV show and a character enters into like this magical world of fantasy and stuff, you know, usually it probably starts off with that person trying to escape their problems. And in a way, they learn from their problems. And 
I would probably say two of my favorite what examples of this would be Alice in Wonderland and the Fan Tobooth. And of course, the person who actually originated this so cliche would probably be also it would be Wizard of Oz. And it's been used for a lot of TV shows because, well, yeah. <laughs> it's an interesting concept because when you think about it, you don't really have to change any of your main characters. You just kind of have to change their appearance because you know when you have when you're gonna do the whole Alice in Wonderland thing, you kinda wanna make make the Chizar cat look like a person who would fit that that particular characteristic. For example, oh it would be hmm. Let's say your crazy uncle to be the treasure cat. Yeah, because he's the most predictable family, unpredictable family character. He does whatever he wants, he can be whatever he wants, and he can kill you if you want to. Um maybe your queen your aunt Aunt Marge is the Red Queen. Because she always has these violent mood swings off with her heads, and and she goes to being more of a genteel, nice person. You say, now, Kurt, now, speak while you're cursing, dear. Okay, it saves time. And then you got the Mad Hatter on the large hair, which can be your parents easily. You know, they say one thing, then they do another. It's tearing me apart. That, and a lot of those things could be transcended of your own issues and problems. That's why I always love fantasy, as he's just a, a beautiful thing in that realm. However, those are my favorite movie cliches. Because I have curiosity. If you had to pick any, which are your favorites? Let's put them down in the comments below. Please subscribe and look at my hey, fan fiction and that Twitter. And WordPress has links down in the description. Huh. Until next time, this is Evelyn O'Malley. Hey, we'll go over and out. Huh. Bye.